continue the lecture on data display with section on three-dimensional visualization. Three-dimensional visualization is now quite common thanks to Google Earth, GPS navigation systems, and almost everybody playing computer games as a child. And gradually, visualization in 3D is replacing contours and 2D maps as a means of communication of geospatial information if it includes 3D views. Most applications are really focused on viewing and analysis of three-dimensional data. And by three-dimensional data, we mean not only topography, but also any data where, the, um, where certain attributes can be used for third dimension. The 3D visualization is based on projection of 3D object onto two-dimensional screens. So, uh, so we have the issues of perspective and the properties of this perspective view. So there, therefore, we need to uh, define certain parameters for this, uh, for this uh, projection. First of all, we need to define viewing position. Viewing position is usually uh, defined by height, distance, and angle from which the viewer is looking at the three-dimensional object or surface. Then we can also manipulate surface position, the exaggeration and resolution. Very important and useful uh, tools are uh, manipulation of light and shading. And we can also uh, define surface col color using raster maps or drape uh, different types of vector data over the surface. Here is one example of, uh, of the parameters that are used to display three-dimensional data, and that's, uh, that's lighting, where the lighting is uh, controlled through the, uh, through the direction, by its direction, uh, height over the surface, and also the properties of light and the surface can be modified. For example, the light intensity or the shininess of the surface. And this is uh, quite useful uh, when you want to highlight certain features in the surface or if you are looking for potential artifacts. The best uh, to explore the visualization in 3D is uh, by running the software and and by playing around with different parameters, and we will do it for our assignments. So let's move on to multiple surface visualization. So you can bring a, into 3D view not only a single surface, like a topography, but also but several surfaces. And this is particularly useful for uh, using visualization for data analysis. For example, you can use it to compare surfaces produced by different technologies. Uh, for example, you want to explore how does digital elevation model for a given area uh, acquired by LIDAR and SRTM differ from each other. You can also compare bare ground and surface with vegetation to see the vertical structure of vegetation. You can also analyze change in topography, for example, on the coast where we have moving, migrating dunes. You can use digital elevation models acquired at different times um, to overlay them as multiple surfaces and see how the topography has changed. And you can also use it to display different surfaces, for example, different soil horizons or geological layers. In uh, uh, geospatial applications, vertical scaling is important. So for example, you will be analyzing soils in 500 square meter area or one square kilometer area, but the uh, soils really change within one meter. So you would be using, let's say, five meter resolution in horizontal, but you may need centimeter resolution in the vertical. Uh, direction. So let's look at some examples. 
So here we have uh, data from our data set. The first example shows, uh, shows bare ground data. This is the surface without any vegetation, any buildings. And next to, uh, next to it, uh, dig so-called digital surface model that has the bare ground data and everything on top of it that was captured by LiDAR. So it will have vegetation, but it will also have buildings. Here is one and there are some buildings here as well. And you can, uh, you can display this data also on top of each other and then look at the cross sections. And in this example, we have groundwater layer. Then we have the bare ground layer. And then we have the digital surface model layer, which has vegetation and buildings on top of it. Uh, when the surface are, surfaces are stacked, then it is really useful to use uh, cross sections or cutting planes to explore how the relationship between these three surfaces changes um, in space. And you can also explore um, the structure of vegetation. So for example, this is a relatively nature, uh, uh, natural uh, forest, very diverse vegetation in this area, and it is essentially a buffer along a stream. It, it is this one. While this area, when you look at the cross section here, you can see it is very homogeneous. And that's because this piece of forest was planted and it's pines, very homogeneous. Each tree is the same. Uh, another tool that we have uh, uh, when we are displaying multiple surfaces is transparency. And this example is rather abstract, where we have introduced a tilted plane. For example, if we want to uh, want to include a uh, geological fault, but you can see that that this uh, that this plane can be transparent, so that you can see the structure of surface under it. Overall, and generally, use of transparency is rather tricky. You can try it out uh, uh, during the assignments, um, but at some po at certain, for certain applications, it can be pretty useful. Here is another example where we have a mound. Actually, these data are from, from South America, and here are the samples, soil samples, that were taken uh, below the surface and uh, you can use the transparency to find out where the surface is and then look at the samples and their color what kind of uh, what kind of soil was found there so another use of transparency here is the example of multiple surface visualization used for coastal dunes this image shows the position and topography of Jockey's Ridge sand dune on the coast of North Carolina. And the yellow surface is from 1974 when its peak was at 108 feet, somewhere here. And uh, uh, the brown surface is uh, from 2001 and you can see that it's much lower and that it also moved in this direction. And the peak is at 72 feet, much lower, somewhere here, actually. And again, you can overlay the surfaces so that so you can see, uh, see overall how they changed. But, uh, but you can also do cross sections and analyze uh, the movement or the re relocation of the volume of sand. So you can see that the sand was lost in this area and then it was essentially dumped in front of the dune. And it, it happened in different ways at different sections of the dune. We have all already looked at visualization of point data uh, uh, that can be done in such a way that you are adding three-dimensional objects or three-dimensional symbols uh, to the surface. And here is our example with uh, 
with land cover draped over topography and with schools capacity displayed by these um, uh, by these rectangular symbols and the number of mobile units displayed as the uh, as these spheres. A uh, similar application would be, for example, for precipitation data, and that allows you to highlight certain, uh, certain features or certain differences. For example, the wettest and driest locations in North Carolina are actually in the west, and this is the wettest area, and this is the driest area around um, Asheville. And you can just highlight using these point symbols uh, the difference. Another example is visualization of three-dimensional vector data. Uh, today, uh, for the current GIS systems, almost any of them, you can bring in the data from CAD uh, applications and you can display different structures, as in this example. This is a structure which was uh, imported from uh, SDXF from, uh, from CAD system, and here the buildings are colored according to their use, and they were actually created in GIS by extruding them based on their elevation from the footprint. And uh, uh, some of them, some of these, like churches, have actually the full, again, CAD representation, full three-dimensional representation. So now we have looked at display of two-dimensional data, three-dimensional data, and then we can also have dynamic data uh, that represent change over time. And to display those and visualize and analyze those, we can use animations. 